Hi there and welcome. I'm Shawna K. Lister, founder of Memorable Essay. If this is your first time joining me on a live broadcast on Facebook, hello, or on Instagram, welcome. So today we're going to talk about the big reason that IMGs want to match Haider Sequina into residency, right? So there can be a number of reasons, but there really is like a big reason, hey, that it's, it's just, I found it to be true in my experience working with international medical graduates over the past seven years. And so today we're going to talk about it. And so it happens to have been sparked by a conversation that I had last night with a potential client. So this is an IMG. She matched into residency already. So she's actually in medicine. She's in internal medicine and she's considering going on to hematology oncology. So our conversation sort of sparked this, this thought of what I wanted to talk about today. So with her, she told me something that I've actually heard often from IMGs, especially people who have an interest in HEMOC, that it was working. So prior to starting her residency, it was working that really pushed her to want to pursue her residency training in the US. So essentially seeing patients with a pretty poor prognosis and just feeling, you know, who, who wants that all day? You don't want to sort of feel deflated by that reality. And so she saw that and she decided that, excuse, you know, any noise that year. So she saw that and, you know, she decided that, all right, she wanted to see something different. She wanted to be in a place where, you know, her patients could have better odds of getting better. So sometimes when I talk with IMGs, it's the reason that they want to match is like it surrounds sort of like what is the patient prognosis, you know, or I get really sad sort of seeing patients who I feel like they could live, you know, if they had access to better things, but it's not going to happen. The other reason that sometimes comes up, but it's not the big reason we're going to get to that, and it's actually in the same vein, it's having access to better technology, all right? So it's like people want to be on the cutting edge of what's available to them. They want to be able to, to use the best technology, sorry about that, they want to be able to use the best technology, essentially, to figure out how that can help them to be the best doctor possible. All right, so that's still not the big reason, but it definitely is a big push for people. A lot of people, and I mean, you will know if you're an IMG, it comes down to, all right, I want to have the freedom to practice anywhere in the world that I want to practice. For a lot of people, it's as simple as, I want my parents or I want my children, I want my family to be, to be proud of me, right? So whatever your reasons are, there are tons of things that are pushing you towards this match process. Some of the other things that I had written down is that some people really want access to different research opportunities, right? So it's like, you know, you want to spend some of your time in clinic, but also there are certain research questions that you yourself have and you've never been able to explore them. And so for you, residency is a chance to, to dive into that and to basically see where it goes. And for people for whom this is your singular opportunity to train, you cannot imagine not being a physician, right? I remember actually one year I had a client and she was so, there was a lot happening in her life and she really wanted to match, but her big thing was she couldn't imagine going to all of the people who had seen her leave her country to go to an offshore medical school and who had known that she was there, you know, doing all sorts of things and seeing her studying medicine and knowing that she would never actually become a physician. And so I know that for some people, for some IMGs, that is definitely a thing, right? Like you have to actually be able to practice because it's not like other people who they could go work in industry or they would just do something else. You actually cannot imagine yourself not being a doctor. And to be honest, you can't imagine imagine others knowing that you didn't become um, able to practice, all right? These are all very big reasons that can push somebody. But when we actually dig beneath the surface, it ends up being more than that. And so what I wanted to talk about is that for anybody to push against the odds of, you know, having essentially like a six out of 10 opportunity to match, you know, pouring all of those dollars and all of those times into the exams, it must mean something to you. And so I actually compiled a list of places where I know that people normally stop in this process. If it's, oh, sorry, oh, it is hot, yeah. <laughs> That's a thing with good lighting, you know, sometimes it can be hot, but yeah. All right, so when people 
actually decide to take on this match process and they start, there are a number of places that they stop, like especially for IMGs, I know, right? So you stop at the point of, you know, this is something that I want to do. I see my colleagues doing it. And this is especially for people who you're not. <laughs> Yes, it's hot. Good lighting is hot lighting. So I'm like, oh, let me get some air in here. Right. So, I mean, you stop at the point, you know, if you're not at an offshore school and you're actually trained in another country, you stop at the point of, oh, this seems like a good idea. You know, I see other people applying. I'd like to apply. Some people just never start, you know, like one of the big reasons we just don't see our goals actually come to be is that we just don't start. Then there are individuals who they'll actually study for the steps and they're not getting passing grades. Normally they start with step one, they're not getting passing grades. They shelve it there, they don't continue. But there are other people who are pushed by a really big reason, right? And they keep pushing through if that might happen, right? You keep practicing until you get better scores, you take your exams and you match. There are some people who they're not getting good scores in practice, they go ahead and test and they fail. They fail that first step on exam, you know, they don't do well. There are people who stop there. But there are other people who push through that. There are people who retake a step exam, you know, and they apply and they don't match and they stop there. There are people who do it, they reapply and they match. So the point of all of that is that people are stopping at different places in this process, right? And so for anybody who pushes through to the end, there has to be something that I think when you dig a little deeper, it's easy for people who are familiar like with business or any sort of business education or management, there, there is the idea of the fifth why, sort of like when you really dig below the surface, like is it really about, okay, I just want to match because it's the next step or I want my family to be proud of me or, you know, I want, I want a higher salary sort of thing. There is something that pushes people through and you know like you might be one of those people who it's great for you and you get really good step scores because you put in that time or you know that's your ability as some IMGs think you put in all the time that's your ability you get really high scores you spend all of the money that's needed to apply to this match process like why is that what's the real reason so this is the big reason that I have found from working with so many IMGs over the years when you actually dig to the bottom of it. You know, it can seem like, okay, I want the freedom to be wherever and to practice wherever, but freedom only goes so far. I know sometimes people, it's like, okay, you want to be with your spouse or you can't imagine just like not doing this thing, but all of these things only go so far. And I think at the root of it, is self-actualization, right? So this idea of I know who I want to be, and for me, becoming a physician, especially like matching into residency in the US, is going to be essential to me becoming this person. And I can't settle for being anybody else, you know? So like the person I was talking with last night, is like, all right, if she doesn't match into fellowship, she might be comfortable taking on a hospitalist role. But she said, you know, I might be comfortable doing it, but that's not, that's not really what I want, right? That's not where I see myself. And so I once had a client who, I mean, we can think of various ways of defining self-actualization, but to me, I think she defined it perfectly. And for her, she wanted to be a surgeon. And, you know, self-actualization is like getting to this point where, you know, if you're familiar with Maslow's Pyramid, like your basic needs are met, you know, you have your food, you have your water, you have your shelter. In real life, you have like some degree of success or something, but you want something more. You want to feel like, you know, this is my purpose or I'm operating at like the limit of who I can be. But the way that she said it when she spoke to me, this she was another client, she said, you know, she had a very hard time applying to medical school before she got into medical school. But she went ahead and she made magic happen and moved mountains to go to medical school. And she said that the way that she was able to do that is that every day she sat down and she just saw herself in a white coat walking through the hospital corridors in her country. And whenever she would talk about that, she says, you know, I see myself, I see myself in the code, I see myself in the code. And then eventually, you know, like finishing med school and, you know, she is on her way to becoming a surgeon. Like, that's all she wants. She's definitely going to be a surgeon. She says, I see myself, I see myself in my office with my tools. Like, I always, I just, 
I see myself there, you know? And so that is what self-actualization is. And that is the big reason that pushes most INGs to apply to residency at the root. From what I have found, you know, in my experience, like when you dig away all of it, you're thinking about the end, you know, the older ages of your life, the end of your career, and just wanting to look back and feel like that person who I saw myself becoming, that's who I became. So I, I hope that you're able to hear some of yourself in this or that, you know, some of it sounds familiar. Again, I'm Shawna K. Lester. I'm the founder of Memorable Essay. I'm the creator of the Residency Match Application Accelerator. And I'll catch you here live on Facebook or on Instagram at another time. All right. Bye.